welcome back. We're unpacking the Adamson barbecue case, maybe cases. And joining me is Adam Skelly, who's the owner of Adamson barbecue himself and uh, his colleague, I suppose, Chris Weisdorf, who's um, helping, I guess, with the case, providing some advice. Thank you both for joining me. Adam, you know, you set out to stand up, I guess, against the mandates that you felt and you believed were unjust and were obviously very impactful and negatively impacting your business. You probably had no idea what was going to happen after. Uh, you're now a huge litigant uh, and you've had charges levied against you. You're actively defending them. What has been the personal cost to you emotionally and financially to deal with all of this now, um, I guess, three years post? Well, I lost a very successful business. Like I said, I was able to open two new locations. So I had three restaurants with over 50 employees working for me. Uh, it's a project that I had been working on for nearly a decade. That's all gone now. It cost me a lot of relationships with family and friends who disagreed with my stance. A lot of them are coming around to the truth of the matter now. But yeah, huge financial loss. Like, like I said, 50 plus employees I had a very successful business there. Wow. And the, for litigating all these cases, I mean, this is lawyers aren't cheap. Yeah, that's right. There was an initial fundraiser. Uh, I didn't even start it when I was uh, in jail. Uh, uh, another gentleman started a fundraiser when I came out. It was at $300,000. Like I said, that was all spent within the first year because I was facing criminal charges. I was being sued by the city of Toronto. Plus, we were launching this constitutional challenge and then about 100 plus municipal licensing charges that I was hit with after the protest. So it was very easy to spend $300,000 on these lawyers. There was, as Chris mentioned, there was some negligence and we're suing a few of those lawyers, but it'll take some time to recover those funds. Now, in the meantime, I've been run totally dry. We've had some other crowdfunding efforts with the help of Concerned Constituents of Canada, and obviously Chris is involved with them. They've raised some more money to help push the case along. Now we're stuck with a $30,000 cost order to continue the case. This is because the courts consider it almost an inevitability that we lose our initial challenge, and this will cover the Crown's cost of uh, defending our case. So, so we're about halfway through... Yes, to prepay, the courts hold the funds. If we lose, they get paid to the Crown. If we win, those funds will be returned to us. Oh, wow. I, I don't recall hearing a case like that where usually costs are awarded at the end of a case, but not uh, midstream or at the beginning. Well, it's one of many ways that the Crown is used to hinder the uh, development or continuation of this case. They filed a motion for security for costs and successfully argued that we should have to pay in advance despite the fact that, you know, I don't have a business anymore and we're in financial dire straits. My goodness. My goodness. So where, what do you hope to accomplish here then, Chris, with this litigation? Where do you hope to see this go? Well, yeah, I, 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 to respond to uh, what Adam just said, to kind of add to it, um, yeah, and because people want to know this and people have asked this at, at length on Twitter, I mean, how much money was raised and where the money go? Well, there was there was over three hundred thirty uh, over three hundred forty thousand dollars that was raised on that GoFundMe, and additional money that was raised through people, uh, our supporters in Windsor and places like that, and and even with all that money that was raised, um, the amount the the amount of money that was spent was astronomical. Adam was out two hundred thousand dollars before the end of twenty twenty. One hundred fifty thousand dollars to defend against the the injunction, the reopening Ontario Act injunction. $50,000 for his criminal defense, including the bail restrictions, which most of which, not that not all, were lifted. Um, that actually uh, has been used to lift bail restrictions for, for people caught in the convoy. So that was uh, extremely valuable, but it got that cost $50,000. $101,000 for the notice of constitutional question and motion, which was not heard. Uh, $50,000 for outside counsel to assist. $50,000 to resurrect the, not the notice of application which wasn't properly put together in 2021, $30,000 of costs ordered and paid already. My goodness. That's, that's up to $431,000. Plus there's the additional $32,000 that, that was owed on as of the 19th of this month, as well as legal costs. And that okay, doesn't we... count what else it will cost to, to see this through to um, both the Superior Court and the Court of Appeal. But we have raised some money recently over the last um, six weeks. Which okay, Adam, I, we, we only have about 20 seconds left. Adam, I want to give you the final word. What do you, what message do you want to leave to our viewers? 
Well, if there's anybody who feels like it would benefit them or the citizens of Ontario or Canada for us to see this challenge through, find a constitutional violation and open up the path to remedy for anyone who's affected by these lockdowns, you can donate to our crowdfunding campaign. It's on GoFundMe. I'm sure you can help us with links. I'm sorry, it's on Give, Send, Go. Uh, if you feel like a you know successful constitutional question would help you, we'd be happy to receive your support.